So what is up, guys? Nick here helping you to master your technology. Who should buy the LG G7 ThinQ, or some people like to say Think? Well, we're going to find out in this video. This is going to serve as my review of this device. Let's begin with the person who is looking for the spec bump. Okay, so for this first person who's looking for an upgrade, we're going to talk about the spec upgrader, the person who wants to upgrade based on specs. And if you have an LG G6 from last year, you're definitely upgrading a lot. And if you have something prior to the LG G6 and you're coming to the G7 ThinQ, it's even more of an update. You go from a 5.7 inch display here over to a 6.1 inch display, which does get brighter. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. Also, it does come with a notch though, so some might not like that new design cube. You have a massively improved processor. Over here on this device, you had the Snapdragon 821, which was pretty behind even for its time when it first launched. The LG G7 ThinQ gives you the 845 Snapdragon with four gigs of RAM, which is similar to the G6, but you can get it up to six gigabytes of RAM. But the processor alone is a huge upgrade and a, a great reason to upgrade from the G6 to a G7. Next up is GPU. You have the 630 over here on the LG G7 ThinQ, which is going to be much better gaming performance and thermal performance in gaming over the LG G6. So gamers, this is a massive update as well. Also going from Bluetooth 5.0 up from 4.2 on the LG G6 is a huge update. And lastly, you go from dual 13 megapixels to dual 16 megapixel cameras on the rear. The wide angle is at 12 millimeters for the G6 and on the G7 ThinQ, it's at 16 mil. So it's definitely not as wide as the G6, but it's also sharper because there was a little bit of distortion on the wide angle for the G6. But for the widest angle, the G6 actually still has a better width in terms of that because it's 12 millimeter versus 16 millimeter. But I'll take the G7 thin cube because it's a sharper wide angle shot than the G6. So if you fall into this camp of just wanting to upgrade your specs to be more modern and up to date with the times, the LG G7 thin cube is going to be for you. A couple of things I want to mention about the design of the LG G7 thin cube is that it does have Gorilla Glass 5 on the back and on the front and metal along the sides, but it's very thin and narrow. So it's one of the most comfortable phones to use of this year of the Android flagships. The OnePlus 6 is not a big phone, but it's really quite wide in comparison to the LG G6. So if you can see right here, there's a much fatter, wider phone here in the OnePlus 6. Also is the Pixel 2. So if you're looking at the Pixel 2 XL, it's in a similar price range. This phone is much chunkier than the LG G7 ThinQ. The LG G7 ThinQ is actually about the same size as the popular Moto G6, the budget range of Android smartphones. You can see almost identical in the size there. And that's quite a feat for a flagship because flagships don't usually do this. The iPhone 10 has received a lot of praise for its, you know, big screen and the small body. And I would argue that the LG G7 is your Android alternative to this style. So if you're into that whole big screen, light body, you're going to really love the LG G7 ThinQ. And this is definitely one of your only options on the Android side that offers all of that and flagship specs at this current time. So those of you who are looking for a durable Android device, you should definitely take a look at the G7 ThinQ. Like I said earlier, it does have Gorilla Glass 5 on the rear and on the front. But one thing that some people don't mention is that it's IP68 water and dust resistant. But we should also mention it's mil spec STD810G. So basically what that means is that it's rated to basically withstand military environments. Definitely a very strong showing here for durability on the LG G7 ThinQ. There's not really a lot of flex in this phone, and I think that you would have a very durable device here if you decided to pick up the LG G7 ThinQ. Next up, those of you who are looking for a very bright display, the LG G7 ThinQ has to be on your list, and mostly because of this mode right here, the boosted mode. You can see I almost blinded you right there. 1,000 nits here of brightness on the LG G7. And I can tell you right now, nothing comes close to this phone when it comes to seeing this thing outside. I've got all the flagships on deck and none of them even touch this phone when it comes to being in that pure sunlight. So those of you who are cyclists, you skateboard, you, you ride an e-skateboard to work, or you know, you're out on the train and there's sun gleaming into the train and you can't see your phone, or you're walking down the street and uh, you use your phone a lot out on your commute, this is definitely a phone that's going to beat a lot of the others for seeing it. You don't have to shade your phone 
with this one. So consider that also this display is not only very bright, but those of you who are looking for an improved color accuracy over prior LG LCD displays, this one is top notch. Also, you do have modes you haven't seen before on their LCD panels, and that is like to change the colors here. So you can change it just like you could do on a Samsung phone. You could do expert mode, games, sports, cinema, eco, auto. There's a lot going on here. In addition, that notch does get some, you know, features as well. You can also change the resolution, but taking a look at the new second screen, you can change like the theming of the the second screen up there so you can see check it out you can see different colors and you could hide the notch if you want as well so this customizability is something android definitely offers over the competition but the lg g7's thinq display is very bright but yes it definitely does have those typical attributes that an lcd offers like kind of washed out blacks not super dark blacks but it has very good colors in comparison to some of their older lcd panels and it's very sharp so i think people who like the lcd technology and don't like pwm are really going to like the lg g7 Thin cube. I'd say the only area where the OLED displays on Samsung devices, for example, are really beating this phone is in media consumption. So if you're watching videos and movies, I think Samsung has the better offering. But if you're the type of person who's using your phone outdoors a lot, or you just need a really bright screen, and you don't you don't want glare and stuff like that. The LG G7 has a very easy to read display at pretty much any environment you're in. So it has that benefit there. Those of you who are looking for an improved LG software experience should buy this phone because it's the cleanest one yet. Now, I know LG software is not everybody's cup of tea, but at the same time, if you're buying LG phones before, this is going to feel right at home for you. But you get some new features here, like you get context awareness and you get the floating bar smart cleaning. These things are a little bit cleaner than in prior UI interfaces. You also still have the tab view, the traditional tab view in the LG software, if you do like that. And on the LG software here, you do have the AI camera in this phone. Face unlocks comes to the LG G7 ThinQ. So there's a lot going on for this phone. You still got your typical multitasking as you can see with most Android phones and it's not overwhelming I just think some people uh, tend to not prefer the software but at the same time I think it's pretty clean and probably the best you're gonna get on an LG phone so not too laggy you don't see too much delay there's some delays in certain areas like when I hold down the screen here that little lag right there it takes a little bit of a second but the applications they fire open fast the settings menu is smooth the scrolling is smooth haven't had too much of an issue so it gets the job done here and if you're looking for an improved lg software experience this is definitely going to be the one for you even includes this new dts x 3d sound and a hi-fi quad deck we'll talk more about that in the audio section those of you who are looking for an improved camera experience over your lg g6 this is definitely the one for you. Now, I don't think that the LG G7 ThinQ has the best camera phone on the market. That crown still probably goes to the Pixel 2 XL, but it definitely improves on the quality of the photos that you get from the LG G6. And I think the software definitely looks better. The LG G6 software just kind of looks a little bit dated these days, but this comes a little bit closer to the more modern feel of you know most phones this year and you got a lot of new modes here in the, the LG G7 ThinQ. You could still do your manual video. You got this new flash jump cut, which creates its own GIF video, which is pretty cool. And some AI stuff going on. If you hit the AI cam, it will try to recognize the environment, what is in the environment, and take that photo. Wide angle still exists here on the LG G7 ThinQ. But I don't want to talk too much about the cameras. We did a camera review versus the iPhone 10. We went in depth on this. But just take a look at the LG G7 ThinQ samples. I took a bunch of them. And let me know if you think this camera is worthy of your time.
And I should mention with that camera you just took a look at, nice flat camera design on here, so no rocking on a table like we see with some other smartphones with thick camera humps here. And one more thing, the LG G7th NQ has expandable storage up to 500 or so gigs, maybe more depending on the model you go with. But the LG G7th NQ has a feature that it basically owns this category in, and that is the headphone jack section. Because it has a hi-fi quad deck, no other phone company is offering you this, so this this is kind of a specialty with getting an LG phone and when you turn on this hi-fi quad deck you get super crisp clean audio you're not going to see on any other smartphone. They also threw in this DTSX 3D sound which makes it sound even better. Now the speaker on the bottom though of this phone is not so loud in comparison to you know dual speakers I feel like on the Samsung S9 Plus but when you do put it on the table it definitely does that effect where it gets really loud here for the G7. So the ThinQ is a great phone, I think, for people who like their headphone jack. I don't think external audio is the main reason to buy this device, though. But if you're into headphone jack usage, you're going to love the G7 ThinQ. So if you're that person, this is the phone for you. And if you're looking for a pretty good priced flagship, this phone, when it first started, 750 too high. But it came down to about 629 And yes, you could say the OnePlus 6 is cheaper. Some Older flagships are cheaper, sure, but for 2018 and everything you're getting with the G7 ThinQ, this is definitely one of the better values in the price segment now that the price has come down on this phone. Also, you get a two-year warranty if you register to this device with LG in the first 90 days. I have already done so for my LG G7 ThinQ, and that's pretty good peace of mind considering we know the scandal they had years ago. In conclusion, you might have noticed I didn't mention battery life or the Google Assistant key. First up, battery life is not that great on this phone. That's why I didn't mention it, and I don't think you should buy this phone if you're looking for a battery chance. Camp. It definitely doesn't fall in that category, and actually it's rather disappointing. It's a phone that's going to get you through most of the day, but you're not going to be topping off or you're not going to be finishing the day with like a lot of battery and being super impressed. You're going to be like, you know, pretty low and you're ready to charge by nighttime. But some days if you're re really using this heavy, you're going to have to have an external battery pack. So this has been one of the worst flagships I've used this year in terms of battery. I, had, I just have to be honest with you there. Now the Google Assistant key here, not that useful to me just due to the fact that Google is, can be activated in multiple ways. You can just hit this home button. You could put a widget. You could just say, okay, Google. I think it would have been much more useful to be able to remap that button on the LG G7 ThinQ. And some can argue it has iPhone 10 style looks here on the LG G7 ThinQ. It offers a more comfortable design than most flagships, and it has an incredibly bright display for your day-to-day -day usage here, especially in sunlight. A pretty nice wide-angle camera that doesn't have too bad of pictures. I think they're pretty good actually for this device. So if you like LG and you fall into any of those categories, this is going to be a fantastic option for you. There's not really much to complain about here with this phone. It's, it's a pretty well-rounded package and it definitely is a flagship quality smartphone at a pretty decent price. But does the LG G7 ThinQ do enough for you? Are you going to be picking one up? Let us know down below in the comment section of this video. If you have any other questions, comments, concerns, video suggestions, leave them down below. I will take your feedback in. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Thank you very much for watching subscribe if you haven't already i will catch you all in the next episode and peace